Hi team, this is Chris Abram from Go Math. I want to dedicate this video to some of the fabulous teachers that were part of the July 8th MTEL Math Workshop. Um, this is for all teachers to help them think about um, Tanagrams, which is a, a game that you can play using geometric shapes, primarily triangles, squares, and parallelograms. It's kind of tricky if you if you ever get a problem using Tanagrams and you've never used them before, well, you know, it's not that easy. So what I wanted to do with this video is first give you a little background history on Tanagrams and what they are, and then we can look at some ways in which you would solve a problem that perhaps might use Tanagrams. So let's get started. Thanks. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we want to look at Tanagrams. Now this is a game that uh, originated from China and was introduced to Europe around in the middle of the 18th century, 19th century. It was very popular. It became very popular in the United States at the turn of the 20th century. And it's been in our system, in the education system since. Uh, you're given a square made up of seven geometric shapes two large triangles, one medium triangle, two small, um, two small right triangles, a square, and a parallelogram. And you can manipulate and move these shapes in space to help form different things. For example, you're seeing some of the examples now, but let's say you had this square made up of the seven shapes. You could form a cat using the seven shapes. Or for example, you're given this, this boat. You could turn the boat using the seven shapes. Or any now, of tanagrams these. can also be used to get an understanding of part to whole. For example, what part of the entire figure is made up of a large triangle? And then you might be able to see, well, a quarter of the large figure, or 25%. Now, I remember doing tanagrams as a kid. And that's just me. I was doing, I played it with my sister. But you might be more familiar with using, let's say, Legos. Legos is uh, another game, more, much more recent, that would help students understand part to whole and also spatial relationships of geometric shapes. This would be three-dimensional shapes, like, for example, maybe you like to build the Taj Mahal with Legos. Here's a more modern uh, example of three-dimensional uh, shapes in space, but that's not what we're going to focus on today. We're going to look on tanagrams and how they can be related to part to whole questions. So let's take a closer look now have this shape. Now this square represents a whole or a hundred percent and again it's made up of two large triangles, a medium triangle, two small triangles, a square, and a parallelogram. And these by the way are right triangles. This is very important because we have special right triangles. But let's just look at the basics right now. If I wanted to find out what portion of this entire shape is let's say one of the large right triangles. So we're going to try and find out what what percent or what what portion of the entire shape you know is made up of this guy right here. Well you may be looking at this and you may be able to tell right away but let's pretend that you know you weren't so sure. So let's see I have this whole shape I'm going to see if I can divide it into hmm looks like I can divide it into four equal shapes. So if I can divide the one whole into four equal shapes, then basically that's saying that each one of these pieces is equal to a fourth. So if it's equal to a fourth, then one large triangle is equal to 25%. Because I know, I remember from the fraction unit, that one fourth is equal to 25% or 0.25. Okay, this is important to know. But let's just say the question was a little bit different. Let's say we weren't trying to find out that shape there. Let's say we were asked to find out what portion of the entire shape is made up of a small triangle. Ooh, now it gets a little trickier. How am I going to do this? I mean, I can't necessarily, uh, it's not as visually clear, but let's just do a couple of quick steps and I think it will become much more clear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first try and uh, represent everything as a triangle, a small triangle. So I got a small triangle here, 
guess what? I could break this square up into two, two small triangles. I can take one of these big triangles and just by uh, working with the space, maybe I'm hoping you see that that big triangle can actually be broken up into what we got, four smaller triangles. So that means all the shapes, all the big triangles can be broken up into four small, smaller triangles. And so on and so on. Basically I'm going to keep on doing this. Look here, I have this medium triangle made up of two small triangles. And then lastly, we have our parallelogram that we could divide into two small triangles. So now the question is, what portion of the entire figure is the small triangle? Well, we count up how many small triangles we have in our whole. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Guess what? There's 16 small triangles. And I'm only looking for one triangle, so it would be 1 16th. 1 16th of the entire figure is made up of that small triangle. Now, the question could have been different. Let's say you could have been asked what portion of the entire figure is, is the big one. And we already said, you know, that's one fourth, or we could say it's made up of four small triangles, four out of 16, which would equal one fourth. The question could have been, what portion of that, let me, let me go back and highlight it in a, a unique color. What portion of that shape, oops, what portion of this shape is made up of a parallelogram? That's not a very unique color. Let's get something a little brighter. Like this one right here. Well, the parallelogram, if I divide everything into equal triangles, then the parallelogram out of 16 triangles, oops, out of 16 triangles, it's really 2 out of 16 or we would say one eighth. And if you've taken the workshop with me, we've talked about this. One eighth is one of our fat magnificent seven fractions. One eighth equals, you know, twelve point five percent. And you just need to know that, you know, as a math fact. One eighth equals twelve point five percent. Memorize it. Now what I did here was I took a large geometric shape and I divided it into smaller shapes so that I could get an understanding of how many parts are in my whole. And this has happened a lot on the MTELs. They'll give you a shape. You can use this strategy to help get a sense of part to whole. For example, let's look at another problem that uh, you know comes up sometimes on these exams. Let me clear this off. Let us die. 